This is Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast, and this is a fun one. Chris Graham, Scott German, Virginia 65, Duke 63. It happened. Uh, and actually, a lot happened that, Scott, you and I had predicted would happen yesterday when we did our podcast. But, you know, we can we can worry about the foul discrepancy. Isaiah Wilkins getting four cheapies in 14 minutes. And, boy, two front-end, one-and-one misses uh, by by 90% foul shooters and all that. So we can worry about that later because, at the end of the day, Virginia somehow shoots 39% from the floor. All that bad stuff happens and still wins this game. Scott, your response. Wow. I mean, yeah, we we nailed it. I mean, we're not we're not exaggerating. Just that I'm sure the podcast is still up. Go back and listen to it. I mean, we 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 kind of surmised uh, um, yesterday what might have happened early on. Someone getting foul trouble. It happened. Uh, you know, we'd have to weather some maybe some officiating calls. It happened. You know, the final stats, final fouls, totals didn't look that out of the norm. But um, you know, as well as I do, they. they not exactly when they're, how many they're called, but when and to whom. So, uh, but wow, what a great! I mean, just an absolutely Im- impressive win. Uh, you know, I read a quote uh, on one of the points for uh, I think it was from Anthony Gill, maybe, and it said, "Who's go to Cameron? Go into Cameron and take their lunch money." <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's pretty much wraps it up, you know, I mean, we, uh, the fact, too, we gave up, called up a 13-point lead, got down by four, but still maintained the composure. I mean, I didn't, uh, you, you, I think you said earlier when we talked, you were kind of worried at that point, but you know, I really did not, I, I kind of thought that was going to happen, that Duke, you knew Duke was going to make a run, but, um, you know, we never really lost that composure, and, um, Stuck to the game plan on the offensive end of the floor. Of course, defensively, we just played another spectacular game. Uh, I think if I hear the phrase defense travels one more time, (laughs) I'm going to blow a gasket. But, I mean, literally, it does, and it did today. And we held Duke to a late basket other than that late basket held them to 60. Three points, 65 points, which is about 20 below their average. 22 in the first half, Chris. 22 points. They're averaging 46 in in the in the first half. And you know, I don't care what Shashevsky told him, how how motivated, motivational he is. What do you tell a team that is as talented as Duke that goes out for 20 minutes and is held to 22 points? What do you tell them at halftime? Yeah, you know, and whatever he said, you know, and, and it wasn't just what he said. I mean, I think there was a strategic move that that we saw coming, and that was what was a little frustrating to watch. Uh, you knew he was going to go 2-3 zone. Every every game this season, the Dukes had a, 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 you know, a challenge dating all the way back to November, those games against Texas and Florida. You know, they got, they got down big to those teams uh, in that tournament. I think that was a tournament like in Hawaii or something like that. Uh, they got down big and they went to zone and and slowed teams down and got them out of their rhythm and and then they you know they they can still run out of that and, and do what they need to do so we knew that was coming they don't often do it at the start of a half and they and that's what coach K did in this game he started the second half in a zone and so uh, for some reason Virginia wasn't wasn't ready for that uh, you know you talk about the composure but I, I look at it and say you know the, at, at times it felt like. Because of a couple of qu- early misses, you know, uh, Devin Hall makes the first three of the half, so you feel, hey, you know, they went zone in Virginia, passes the ball around, gets a good good look and an open three. They missed a couple of threes. Then Isaiah Wilkins, you know, that's we always talk about the soft spot of a 2-3 zone is that area right there at the foul line, maybe a foot inside the foul line, so you pass the ball there. And, and Wilkins has been so good at that the last few years of playing that role, whether, whether we, when he gets the ball there, either he can drive to the basket, he can kick out to an open shooter on the perimeter uh, in one of the corners, or he can hit the little jump shot himself, or even drive to the basket himself. There's four options there. But he missed a couple of those early open jumpers, and then he started pulling the string on those shots. And, uh, and, and you know, it felt like sort of that, that, that tenseness kind of seeped out to everybody else just for a few minutes. And, and you know, and, and on the defensive end, it was so odd. You know, Duke's, Duke shoots 12 of 16 in the first 10 minutes of the second half. 
Uh, now they finished, I'm looking at it here, 17 of 29. So that sounds good. If you, you talk about the whole half, 17 of 29 is 58.6%, but they were five of their last 13. And so what happened was, you know, and, and I sense this, they, they, they maybe lost their composure in that little stretch because Duke outscores Virginia 24-7 in the, uh, after, after the Devon Hall 3. So at about the 10-minute mark, you know, it's only 46-42, but it does feel like, hey, if Virginia doesn't regain its composure, which they did, but if they don't, this game's going to be a 15-point Duke win. I mean, we've seen that. Duke, uh, the, the games I mentioned, the, you know, the, the Florida and Texas games, even as recently as last week against Miami, they were down 13 late and won by eight. So it, it's, it felt like, I'm sure the Duke folks watching the game and the Duke players and the Duke coaching staff felt like, okay, we've got it turned around. We're good. We, you know, we're ready to go. But what happens then is Virginia down 46-42, everything going wrong. Uh, to, to say the least, uh, for this Virginia team, they, they got it back. They, they got it right. And, and, and where they got it right, I don't want to be cliche, but they got it right on the defensive end. Uh, so after that, after that 12 of 16 start from the field for Duke, they're 5 of 13 down the stretch. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so that's, you know, if you can assert on the defensive end like Virginia did, then you open things up. You know, you get a couple of nice driving layups from, uh, from DeAndre Hunter, who filled in greatly for Isaiah Wilkins, who had the four fouls in 14 minutes. We'll talk more about that, I'm sure, a little later. Before he went down to injury, there's more adversity. So here you go. You, you got the guy who's really keying you in this run. Hunter goes down, and uh, Wilkins comes back in, and, you know, things pick back up. So, uh, you know, th that this win, I, I think, Scott, and I'm going to get your thoughts on this. I think this win means more because Virginia had to deal with that adversity on the road against that talented Duke team in the second half, then say, you know, the, the first half looked like it was going to be a, a, a blowout. I mean, you know, you're up 10, you're at one point up 12 in the first half. Hall makes that first three, you're up 13. It felt like the game was trending towards blowout. I think it, it's a lot more meaningful, though, that Virginia faced that terrible adversity and was able to overcome and win the game. Well, and, and uh, again, up 10 at the half, um, you know, I, I, I did not feel as though that, that game was, Virginia was going to win convincingly. I knew Duke was going to come by and make a game of it and, and play. It was going to be a nail biter. But, yeah, and I mean, it kind of, at the end, now that it's over with, it kind of makes you feel great to, to know that Virginia was able to overcome adversity, um, didn't hang their heads, didn't let get caught up in the emotion of Cameron. And, um, I mean, that's a character building win. Uh, if you could have looked ahead and seen that when it was happening, it would have been a lot better, but we didn't know what was going to happen when they were losing their lead. And Duke actually, I think, took a four. Duke led by as many as four. Was that, that, that where that lead went? I think it, 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 their biggest lead was four, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, you know I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that I, I – I don't know if anybody uh, would disagree. I don't know if anybody would agree. Duke is a good ball team. I mean, Duke is good. Uh, but Virginia is better. And in my opinion, you play this game ten times, Virginia's going to win seven games, maybe eight out of ten. Uh, overall, Virginia did not play an incredibly great game offensively. Overcame that uh, defense that did came out with in the uh, second half. Overcame – you know, what we knew was going to happen, um, some one-sided officiating, uh, particularly early in the second half, survived all that and won. And you play this game on a neutral court, and Virginia wins eight out of – I think Virginia wins eight out of ten times. And, and listen to these numbers. This is, this is a team that grinds out a win against a good basketball team. Duke's number four. You know, so this, th these are the numbers for Virginia. 39.4% from the field, 35.1% in the second half. 27% from three-point range, 27% uh, in the second half, 4 of 15 in the second half. Out-rebounded 44-31. Duke has 12 offensive rebounds in the game. Uh, at, at, until Duke had to foul uh, to get Virginia the foul line in, in the last 30 seconds, the foul discrepancy was 18-9 to 9 in favor of Duke. I mean, Virginia had 18 fouls, Duke had 9 fouls. So now here's a couple things that Virginia did well. All those things are bad because Duke shoots 48%. Now, they didn't shoot from three well either. They, they didn't make anything in the first half, finished four of 15. It was four of eight in the second half. Uh, but uh, but here's, here's what so, – so Duke has the, the, the big advantage in rebounding, 44-31.
but second chance points, Virginia actually has a 12-10 advantage in second chance points. So even with all those offensive rebounds that Duke got, didn't get anything for him. And Virginia actually, with, with, you know, with, with fewer opportunities, did better. And here's the big number. And we've been talking about this all season and how interesting this is. The pack line defense is not supposed to be a turnover-prone, you know, a turnover-forcing defense. Duke has 16 turnovers in this game. Virginia just five turnovers in this game. And that 16-5 discrepancy, Virginia has a 14-4 advantage in points off turnover. So, you know, second chance point, that was the, the big fear I had. I, when I did my keys to the game, I, you know, and I thought we would play better defensively in the post. If you don't have Isaiah Wickles on the floor, it's going to be hard to do. Bagley has 30. Carter has 14. That's 44 of their 63 points. What Virginia did was they shut down the guards. But I thought, okay, shut down the post. Shut down. Duke's going to have the advantage on rebounding. And uh, uh, this game comes down to who does a little bit better job. Well, actually, as it turns out, I mean, their post guys, their post guys are a combined 19 of 29 from the floor, 44 points, 29 rebounds. And they still lost to a Virginia team that shot 39%. Scott, these numbers just don't make any sense to me. No, they do not. They, they. I mean, you look at those. I'm looking at what you just read, and I'm, I'm trying to. I mean, we're both analytic uh, type geeks, and um, I'm having to kind of wipe my eyes because there's something, something's not adding up. Uh, something's not adding up out there on, on what we're looking at, and. Um, I mean, what is it? The only thing is the turnovers, and Virginia only committing five turnovers, and so a 16-5 discrepancy in turnovers. You know, there were, there were 66 possessions in this game. That's about midway point. Virginia averages 60 possessions a game. Duke averages 72, so 66 is obviously right down the middle of the, of the possession. So nobody really dictated pace. I mean, they came back to Virginia's style a little bit more, but then they had to play faster than they normally do, so Duke gets a little bit of advantage. But 16 turnovers on 66 possessions, that's about a quarter of your possessions. And so that's one four. And so as, as a result, Duke, instead of having 66 chances to score, has 50 chances to score. Now they scored 27 field goals. They only shot 5 of 11 from the foul line. But, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, except for turnovers. And now, so the defense on the post wasn't what it could have been, should have been. Uh, because Isaiah Wilkins played three minutes in the first half. He had two fouls. We, Scott, we and I, you and I both said that that was going to happen. Um, he finishes with four fouls in 14 minutes. But uh, what Virginia was able to do was they slowed him down enough. DeAndre Hunter then, you know, he, he, he did his best. I mean, the kid is 6'7", 210 pounds. He did his best trying to guard Marvin Bagley the third in the post. And he did enough of a, a job slowing him down just enough that – you know, uh, what Hunter was then able to give Virginia on offense, especially in the second half, uh, you know, when he played in that uh, that role there. After Wilkins struggled early in the second half, uh, the, uh, Hunter came in actually had all – let's see here. He had eight points in the second half on four of eight shooting. Uh, and, and uh, you know, in the first half, he, he and uh, Ty Jerome had a neat little backdoor play working from the high post. Uh, he had a couple of assists to Jerome early, so – but, uh, you know, we, we, it's a kind of a broken record. But once again, DeAndre Hunter comes up big for this team. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Devin Hall, 14 points, uh, eight rebounds in 39 minutes. Kyle Guy kind of had a, one of those games where you look up and you, you see he has 17 points and you don't really realize. He had 10 in the first half, only had to shoot the ball four times to get 10 points. Hit a big three with 320 to go to give us that five-point lead, a little bit of breathing room at that stretch, a very key basket there. Uh, Jerome had the big three with 30 sec 39 seconds left uh, to you know, once again extend the lead back out to five. But they're, 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 they're perimeter guys. Uh, Trevon Duval, six points, three of seven shooting. He had eight assists, but just six points. Gary Trent Jr., eight points, three of 11 shooting. Uh, Grayson Allen, five points, two of eight shooting. So, you know, uh, you know uh, it seems like whether this was the intent or not, that what, what Tony Bennett said today was, okay, your big guys will do what they do. We're not going to let you get open threes and, and beat us that way. And, and uh, hey, it worked. Yeah, we talked yesterday on, the, on our podcast. Um, we we kind of said, hey, look out. Don't be surprised. Somebody, somebody for, for uh, some some starter for Virginia is going to get in early foul trouble. It happened. Isaiah Wilkins, he only ended up playing, he ended up playing 14 minutes. We also said don't be surprised if Jack Salt's minutes, we both said upper 20s, maybe even 30. Yeah. How many minutes did Jack Salt have tonight? 33. Three for three from field goal. 
uh, yeah. from the field. Three for three. But I'm looking at that stat sheet, that box, final box, and boy, look at uh, Ty Jerome's night. Uh, 13 points, seven assists, yeah. one turnover, three steals. Ty Jerome is my offensive player of the game. Yeah, and because and, and he's the one, you know, the points and assists and everything else. He was the guy, even even outside of that, who seemed to just keep things calm down. And, and you mentioned the one turnover. I mean, I'm looking at the list here. There's there, the, we only had five turnovers. Nobody had more than one turnover. Hall had one. Guy had one. Jerome had one. Wilkins had one. And Diakite had one. And so, you know, if you're going to beat a team like Duke, you have to. Now, Virginia didn't shoot great. They shot less than 40 percent, but. You know, they had more chances. When you only have five turnovers in a game, that means 61 chances to score when Duke only had 50 chances to score with all their turnovers. And so, you know, you, you make the most of your situation. Um, you know, I look at, uh, you know, Hall had that uh, another quiet assassin kind of game, the 14 points, eight rebounds. But Hunter, once again, you know, and you, and you, you know, now we have to you know, wait and see with bated breath. You know, he went down. He he landed on a guy. He had had a three pointer in the first half where he he on his follow through he landed on the uh, the defender's foot and he got back up and played and then didn't seem any worse for the wear. And in the second half, it was about the five minute mark. He made that nice driving layup when the shot clock was running down. Landed on a guy's foot. Um, seemed like the the, the sideline reporter for CBS was talking about how. Uh, he was able to jump off both feet, but when he jumped off one foot, it was you know not quite the same, and so they taped him up. Uh, let's presume he's he's you know we've all turned an ankle playing basketball. It's, there's there's uh, three days between now and and uh, the game Wednesday night with with Louisville, uh, but because um, you don't want to see you know anything. Obviously, that's the fir- first thing I was thinking was well one we want to win the game, but two you know thinking about the Justin Anderson broken pinky uh, from a few years ago that ruined that team season. So Hunter is a big guy, but he had a big game defensively, offensively, and um, you know even, even Nigel Johnson didn't do anything in the scorebook. He had no points, 0 of one from the floor, nine minutes. But there were some times in that, in, in that especially in the first half, they brought him in just to kind of settle things down. And he's in, in the second half too. He had a little stretch where uh, he, you know he was in there when Duke was playing full court press. Uh, he was able to help beat the press. So I, you know this was a true team win for this Virginia team today. Uh, it seemed like everybody contributed, whether they scored, rebounded, or just you know just played some valuable defensive minutes. Everybody had a role in this win. Yeah, and, and I mean that's just the blueprint. That's the foundation of UVA basketball. Now here's a here's a statement. I'm going to start it off by saying, and this was the game breaker. This was the game changer. Duke gets zero points from its bench. Well, that's probably not that big a surprise. They're not deep. Um, they get zero points. UVA gets twelve, or actually gets fourteen, but twelve of those comes from uh, came from um, from Hunter. Uh, Diakite had the other basket. Um, but if you look at the, here's the thing: if you look at that, if you if you again being analytics type people, okay, so Duke gets zero points. Virginia gets fourteen, but one of Virginia's bench players, DeAndre Hunter, is equivalent to a to a starter. Uh-huh. But if you go down and look at the last line of that stat column, Virginia's bench played uh, 43 minutes. Duke's bench played six minutes. Yeah, and their starters went the entire second half. Their starters went that entire second half. Uh, Delorier and O'Connell only got three minutes basically between TV timeouts in the first half. And, yeah, uh, you have to wonder what impact that has. You know, Duke fizzled down the stretch. They had the lead. They They – you know, they were 12 of 16 to start the half shooting. They're 5 of 13 to finish. Yeah, you have to wonder, you know, that's 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 the, the, the dice you roll when you only want to play five guys that uh, when they play a team as, as, as deep as Virginia and as talented as Virginia and as tough to play as Virginia, defensively especially, yeah, that's probably that's probably a factor. Fatigue down the stretch probably a big factor for Duke. I, would, I can't imagine it not be. I mean, Duke had three players that played the entire game. Uh, 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 the other two, uh, Duvall and uh, Carter, um, played 37. So, I mean, yeah, it had, and especially playing that team that just grinds you. Possession, not, not just possession after possession, but, I mean, they challenge every pass. And, and, and you know, we've heard some analogies to that uh, like it's like going to the dentist. 
uh, Jay Billis had playing Virginia was like going to the dentist waiting in the lobby, waiting in the waiting room without Wi-Fi or any magazines for two hours. I mean, you know, it's just, um, it, it's got to be a grueling situation and I don't, you know, can't say for certain, but uh, it has to, it has to play somewhat of a factor on, uh, on, you know, the, on the opponent wearing them down as the game wears on. And, and especially for their guards, uh, their guard, you know, guards against when they play Virginia on, when Virginia has the ball on offense, the, the guards on defense have to run through screens constantly. Um, and you look at their guard numbers, uh, Duvall, Trent Jr., and Allen combined 8 of 26 from the floor. Uh, they played 117 minutes. Duvall got three minutes of bench time. But 8 of 26 from the floor, uh, just 19 points from those three guys. I mean, you know, if you if you get anything from your guards, obviously it's, it, it ends up being a two-point game. So you get anything from your guards if you're Duke. You, you know, in fact, you look at this number too. I mean, Duke's four of fifteen from three-point range. Two of those makes were by Bagley. Uh, so, and and one was by Carter. That little flip that they ended up counting. You know, where he was trying to pass the ball to Bagley, where they called a foul, uh, and then they allowed the three-pointer to go in. So, I mean, at, Duke's guards made one three. Their their two big guys made three threes. Uh, Duke got nothing from its perimeter, and that's that's again that's what Virginia does. They you know they, they didn't do it in, in the post today. But they grinded down the those perimeter guys, and uh, you know that's that's uh, maybe that's how all this the, these numbers that don't make sense otherwise. Thirty nine percent from the floor, getting out rebounded, forty four thirty one. That's one of those ways that makes sense. Is uh, you know you you just you just killed those guys on the perimeter for Duke, and and they had a, they had a, all all had off days, probably their worst games of the season today. Oh, absolutely, held them to. I was looking at some of the Ken Palm, held them to one point per possession. Um, how their guards were eight for twenty-seven. I mean, these are just unreal. These are like video game uh, stats that you that you've learned the codes for. You know that you just um, you just don't see this uh, in college basketball. They're just setting uh, the bar so high that they may, they may never uh, they may never be able to 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 reach this again. So we have, here's the, here's the one thing we also talked about, you know, the officiating that we predicted. The one thing that we did not talk about yesterday about the officiating, and I was a little disappointed in, in that uh, late in the game that I felt like the officials should have definitely ended the game when um, Kyle Guy landed the right or the left elbow to, the, it should have been a TKO right there on Grayson Allen. Well, um, yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, because because Allen obviously flopped, and he's tr- what he's trying to do. He's he's Grace now, and that's what he does. He's trying to get a, a cheap technical foul called uh, on the flagrant. What would be a flagrant if they called it? Um, and uh, you know, they went and reviewed it. I mean, and, you know, there was there were a couple of frustrating things. That one, you know, uh, the officials originally did not want to review that play. Guess who? Guess who talked them into reviewing that play? We all know who talked them into reviewing that play. And then that three pointer I mentioned, the one that where Carter was trying to throw the ball to uh, to Bagley in the post, and there was a foul called on the the post defender. And you know when we went to commercial break, uh, th- that was not a three pointer. And then we came back after after Shishovsky, uh jawed at the officials for three minutes. We got three points for Duke. So I mean, you know we t- we talked about that yesterday too, Scott. We did. You know it, it, this foul discrepancy happened as as we said it would. Uh, a, a key Virginia player, Wilkins in this case. Uh, getting getting cheap fouls, having to sit on the bench for a long time. That happened, as we said it would. And and, and Coach K talked his team into, well, he got him three points on that on, on that uh, it, what was originally not going to be a three point play. And then uh, uh, he almost got his team a a, a cheap flagrant foul uh, when they were tackling Kyle Guy in the corner. So I mean, shame on the ACC. You know, we we all knew going into this game uh, that that this was going to be. The situation where the ACC was going to make sure that Duke got a chance to win this game, uh, whether they deserved a two on the floor or not, uh, it, it played out that way. Maybe that's even sweeter though for Virginia because they beat Duke and the ACC today. So heck with them all. Yeah, and uh, he's getting uh, in the uh, in the broad spectrum of the college basketball world. Just again, just just scatter shooting around the site. He's getting a lot of negative pub publicity on that, especially when he 
um, pretty much refused. Cal Guy reached down to help him up, and he basically acted like a little uh, little crybaby and wouldn't have anything to do with it. And that's not playing well. Out. That's not playing out very well for him either. So what a what a could not ask for a better day. You couldn't. You could not. And then, and then this didn't have anything to do with this game. But, but eight miles away, UNC loses in Chapel Hill to NC State. And I, it's, they flashed the graphic up on the screen at the end of the game uh, of the Virginia Duke game. First time since 1973 that both on the same day Duke and UNC lose at home. Now, so if you're a Virginia fan listening, which obviously 25 minutes into this post game podcast, you're a Virginia fan and you're reveling in it just like we are. Um, there's no better day than when Duke and Carolina both lose and when Virginia has something to do with that one. And actually, it's, it's even more meaningful when it's Duke these days. It used to be when we beat Carolina, it was more meaningful. But in the last several years, it's gotten so much more so when it's Duke. You know, the game there two years ago where Brogdon made a layup with about 10 seconds to go and then Allen uh, took six steps and got the little jump shot to go through at the buzzer. I mean, things like uh, dating back even to the, what, 96 game where, uh, you know, the clock, situation happened and, and they let Wojciechowski shoot free throws and the game was over. I mean, there have been so many of those things with Duke that when you when you overcome, well, you overcome a good team in their place and you overcome what feels like a stacked deck with the officials and you win the game and you're 20-1, uh, yeah, these, these are, these, this is a good day to be a Virginia fan and we got a few days to let this sink in, I guess. And uh, we are. We're, we're going to revel in this. And uh, hopefully, you know, I guess here we go. We, we're, we're, we're not true typical UVA fans unless we, we try to spot that gray cloud somewhere. And I guess the gray cloud in this, so let's hope that it's just a sprain for DeAndre and he maybe sets out the Louisville game and we get him back. Let's hope it's nothing else, nothing more serious than that because, you know, he's become a pretty integral part of this team. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually hopeful as someone myself who and Scott played a lot of competitive pickup ball like I did for years too. Um, I sprained I sprained ankles many many times. Uh, sometimes it doesn't hurt, and then you know you go back home and it and it and it, it could be long term. And sometimes it hurts like crazy when you do it, and and you're back out there ten minutes later. And so the game was kind of at the end, and Hunter didn't get back in the game. But uh, I like to think that if 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 he needed to, he'd have been back out there. Um, but uh, we'll, let's, let's hope we see him Wednesday night. And, uh, boy, uh, you know, I don't know what – I don't want this podcast to end. Unfortunately, it does have to end. But uh, uh, <laughs> Scott and I will uh, – and, and you, uh, you know, let's go paint the town orange and blue wherever you are uh, <laughs> because this, the, because we deserve it. I, th- I feel like we all sort of had something to do. In, in a way, we all were nervously sitting watching and screaming at the TV and everything else. So I think we deserve a chance, uh, Scott. I mean, for for all UVA fans out there, uh, let's let's go out and let's go out and celebrate this. Yeah, and you know what? I'm not going to tune their own horn so much, but I am going to tune their own horn because I don't think there's many people listening that were that were in JPJ at around five o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon about eight years ago or nine years ago, ten years ago, whatever it was, when we were playing a CBI game against Bradley University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we stuck with them, and we could very well be the number one team in the nation come come Monday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, and it'd be the first time since 1982. I, I've got the headline ready to go. I'm just ready to push the button on that. So, um, so uh, a real quick question: Do they drop? A, I know we're running short, but do, does Villanova drop even with a win? Is this win that impressive that? Actually lose. You know this. This it, it's rare that that there could be an argument made for the two to jump the one, even in uh, even with the scenario you, you laid out there without the number one team losing. But you know, I, I think what at the least, you know, Virginia's been getting one or two first place votes uh, in the polls the last couple weeks. I mean, you're going to see that number go up significantly because. And no offense to Villanova, you play the teams that are on your schedule ahead of you. So you know you play who you play. But between those two teams, this is the most impressive win for either team this season, a win at Duke. And so, you know, you beat number four in their place. They were preseason number one, preseason conference favorite. Um, you know, the argument can certainly be made that if if ever this would happen, 
uh, at this stage of a season, too, that if ever this would happen, it, it, it would be now. So, you know, that's, that's something for us, you know, something for us to chew on the next couple of days, waiting to see what will happen there because it, it may very well. I don't know. I think it's worth exploring. Uh, maybe I'll write a column on that tomorrow uh, just to uh, – just to have something for us to revel in uh, a little bit more. Uh, so, but that's, I think it's a great question. What, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think they will. I, I think what will happen is um, they'll narrow the, 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 the total point. It will be narrowed. It will be a very close first. And I think, it's, of course, it's going to win. They play that Marquette. And, hey, you know, Marquette, hey, we could be talking about the irony of this. Who coaches Marquette? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, so for once in our life, we're going to be rooting for an, an ex Duke player uh, <laughs> um, to to have a good day tomorrow. But I, I don't look for Villanova to win. But I think what will happen is Monday, the, the gap between Virginia uh, and Villanova will, will narrow considerably. It'll be Villanova by, you know, a few votes, and that'll be about it. I don't see us going to number one unless Villanova just plays horribly. And still has a way to find a way to win. That's about the only scenario I see that we over that we overtake them. Well, it's something to watch tomorrow, one o'clock tip. Maybe tune in about two thirty or so uh, if you got nothing else going on tomorrow. Uh, y- you're still kind of watching UVA basketball without having any other rooting interest. So that should be fun. Uh, so Scott and I will get back together, uh, of course, I mean, for Wednesday night's game with Louisville. I mean, now, gosh, you know, we haven't thought about that, but that's another tough one. Louisville's only lost two in the conference, and so Louisville comes to town. When... Talk about that yeah, exactly. Well, just previewing the fact that that's the next game, and it's a few days away. That's Wednesday. It's way out there. So, um, yeah, let's, let's let this sink in for a couple of days, and uh, I know Scott and I are going to, and I know you will as well. So, For Scott German, I'm Chris Graham signing off. Wahoo, wah, Virginia 65, Duke 63.